Hello! Hello! Hey Tara, how, how are, are you? you? I'm Star Wars! Yeah, that's that's a thing. Star Wars! Oh, we have a sick kitty with us tonight. She's very she's having a tough day, aren't you, poor baby? Oh, she's having a rough day. Had our ears clean like three times because they're gunky and itchy and we vomited twice. We're going to have to go to the vet soon. Oh, no. Kitty is um, not feeling good, are you? No. Well, you said she does this sometimes when Dan's out of town. Is it part of that or is it just... It could be. She tends to stress eat and then vomit. So it could be that, that Dan's not home. But you never know. And she's 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 a 13-year-old kitty. So, you know... You well, you know something's wrong because she's looking at the camera, Tara. Mm-hmm. She's cooperating tonight. I know. That's the real, that's the real worry. Is she's not like, fuck you. She's actually, she's like, I'll do whatever you want. All right. As long as you don't leave me alone. She almost fell off her little tower a minute ago. Aw. Licking her butt. And I turned around and I turned back and she's hanging on to the, to the side of it like Gandalf. <laughs> Fly, you fools. And I'm just like, oh my God, kitty, what happened? Okay. No, no, we're not going to walk on the desk right now. We're not yes. going to drink my soda. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Hey, we're not going to walk on the keyboard. Yes, we are. What are you doing? Okay, we're going to take the keyboard away from you. She is cat, is what she's doing. Suddenly, we're very curious about the desk, which we have never, ever been before. Because cat. What are you doing? Baby. Oh. <laughs> Okay, sit on your little tower, be a good little sidekick. <laughs> Has she ever? Has no. she fucking ever? No, and now we're going to give everybody the butt. Uh, this is my butt. Well, Tara, it is that time and... Oh, let me get the intro going. Let's just, let's just dive into this. Holy shit. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck Is Wrong With You? And Tara? Crazy. Yes? You sent me this story. I'm crazy but I did. You, you weren't alone in this. So lonely. Did so many people sent me this story they gave the uh, my email inbox a hernia <laughs> your email has some indigestion a little bit we tiny small small wee bit small wee bit um Okay, let's let's just let's just dive right into this one. That's really all we can do. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. That's that one's later. Sorry, oh. that one's yeah, that later. one looks special too. That one's later. This is the one we're doing right now. Woodland rejects solar farm. Now you're saying to yourself, Nash, Tara. A town rejects a solar farm? How is that? Big how, deal. How could that possibly be a what the fuck is wrong with you story? How? That doesn't, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting it. Well, listen to this. This is some of the reasoning given. Yeah. What the town rejected the building entirely, a, a moratorium on solar farms. Right. They can't try and build any more. During the public comment period preceding the rezoning vote, citizens expressed distrust and fear of the solar panels. Um, Jean Barnes said she represented many citizens who rejected any more solar farms coming to the area. Let's see. Um, she said her home is surrounded by solar farms and it's only worth its val value because of those facilities. She added that the only people profiting are selling their land. Yeah. Um, she was concerned about the natural vegetation. Jean, uh, Jane Mann is a retired science teacher. 
And here's where it is, because there were people with valid concerns. There were people that said other solar farms had economically harmed the area because they had taken up the land where businesses used to be. And property you know, values. Were, yeah. And that there are a lot of solar farms in the town already and that it's hurting property values and hurting the economy and jobs. I get that. Those are totally valid reasons. Then you get to this shit. Jane Mann, a retired science teacher. Remember this. Remember those words. Is concerned that photosynthesis, which depended upon sunlight, would not happen and would keep the vegetation for growing. Because apparently there is a finite amount of sunlight to go round. I mean, there is. It's going to burn out in a billion years or so. But in the meantime, that's a pretty infinite resource. Oh, but she has more. There's plenty of it to go around. The retired science teacher is more. She also questioned the high number of cancer deaths in the area saying no one could tell her that solar panels didn't cause cancer. The sun will give you cancer. So I suppose if you're standing in front of those solar panels or laying atop them, you might get some, you might get skin cancer. If you're doing that, you have another host of problems though because you're stupid. Science teacher. Bobby Man also had another concern. He said, the solar farms would suck up all the energy from the sun and businesses would not come to woodland. The solar farm would suck it. Mm. Well, because they won't have daylight anymore. Woo! Whoa! Yeah, this is kind of like, how does sun work? And because of this city council meeting, Woodland, North Carolina, no more solar farms. Yeah. No more solar panels. Now, the other, con the other concern that people did raise was that this and the other three existing solar farms in the area are not going to directly benefit the people of the town. So, like, the reason people want to put solar farms in this area is because they're in a convenient place to hook it up to that power grid. Mm -hmm. But there won't be any savings benefit to the people who live there. So they're not going to reap the benefit of those solar panels, financially speaking. I get that, too. There were valid arguments against this. Not saying there weren't. But there was a couple people there that need a kick to the head. It's like when you're on YouTube and you read some of the comments on YouTube and you think, these can't be real people. They're trolling me. Yeah. No one really believes these things. It's not possible. Bullshit. I this to my Facebook and somebody insisted that the retired mm. science teacher was almost certainly paid by like an oil or coal subsidy to say these things. No! I'm like, no, I feel like the oil or coal subsidy would have gone with the more valid arguments. And not the, the solar panels will kill all the plants. And could give you, you cancer. cancer. Solar pit. Sol no, I swear to you, I looked hard. Because I could not, but this is one of those articles when I read it, the first thing I did was I went to the website's About Us page. And I'm like, is this a parody site? No, this is a real right. newspaper. Yeah, I, I picked it up from the Independent, looked for the local paper. It's on Snopes now. They've rated it mostly true. Yeah, you want to believe this is the onion, but it's not. And, and part of the part so next of, time you ask yourself, who the fuck is voting for Donald Trump? Part People of the, who don't know how the fucking sun works, probably. Part of the article is part of the article states that the, the, these solar panels are 
are driving the kids away because they don't want to stay here anymore because of the solar panels. So they're leaving the area. No, no. Yeah, I don't no. really see the connection there either. It's not the solar panels that are making them leave. Maybe it's the fact that someone thinks the solar panels will eat the sun. Or maybe it's just the fact that you live in a small town in North Carolina. Do you? Sometimes kids just want to not live in the small town they grew up in. Do you think that when... The, do you think the moon scares the sun away and that's why it goes away in the daytime? And it comes back because the moon... Is that how they think Doesn't it works? It? No. 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 Yeah, because the sun revolves around the earth because it's constantly running away from the moon because the moon is always chasing it. That's how it works, right? I am... I am a... I'm ashamed to be an American right now. Think about all the kids who had this chick for science class. They they are so they, they are probably some they went to put in their college applications and the response letters were just <laughs> I mean hopefully she taught like bio and not earth science. That doesn't really make it less stupid, but it makes it less potentially harmful to the public. <sighs> well, speaking of harmful to the public, um, what's the next one? You know, I know we have a lot of problems in driving, at least in America, with people talking on their phones while they're driving, texting while they're driving, um, putting on makeup while they're driving. Also Giving each other's handies while they're driving. This one, however, is masturbating while they're driving. Yeah, this one, this one is definitely a fucking first. I, I, motorist eating cereal, bowl of cereal leads police on a 30 mile high speed chase. Okay. That's not a short amount of time either. No. Motorist who was spotted eating cereal as she drove along an Ohio interstate led police on a 30 mile chase and with her arrest and multiple criminal charges. According to investigators, Paula Johansson was spotted driving erratically around 2.30 a.m. After pulling over Johansson's car, a Madison County Sheriff's Office deputy noted the 42 year old was, quote, eating a bowl of cereal as she was driving. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, you know what the problem is. You've got that window when you put the milk in. Yeah. And it gets soggy. Yeah. You can't save that till you get to where you're going. You can't. You got you got the soggy window. Unless you're eating Captain Crunch, of course. But then the entire... I mean, I'm a person who eats in the car a lot. But you got to know what your eating the car foods are. Like... Sandwiches are good for the car. Tacos, not so much. Quesadillas, okay. Two-handed food, anything that requires a fork and a knife, no. no. Like, I love oatmeal for breakfast, but if meeting in the car, I don't get oatmeal because that's, you can't eat it. That's entirely the reason where all you have all this fast food breakfast shit that's made for one hand. Right. You have, like, the breakfast wraps. Literally an industry is built on this. Yeah. After Sergeant Tim Weinbrenner uh, told Johansson she was being stopped for weaving across the road, she, quote, stated she'd been eating cereal and didn't mean to go over the lines. During the traffic stop, Johansson sped away from the cop, prompting a high-speed chase that moved into the neighboring county. She, at times, she was driving over 100 miles per hour. She also ran over stop sticks that cops deployed to deflate her tires. After she shredded her left front tire that came off the car, she continued to drive on the rim. When, oh my God, dude. But wait, this is even the, when the vehicle. Those repairs are going to cost a lot more than the ticket you would have gotten. When the vehicle lost its transmission <gasps> and became disabled, Johansson bolted from the auto although she was quickly apprehended by pursuing officers now what i you know what i'm picturing in my head the whole way as she's hopping out of the car she's like i ain't found the prize yet damn it y'all leave me alone 
like I understand you were looking at a ticket and that sucks, but now you're looking at, I mean, transmission, a tranny's fucking expensive. Now you're looking at upwards of a couple thousand dollars of car repair. Jail time. Probably going to need a lawyer. A it's a lot more expensive than that ticket you were dodging. Sometimes. Unless you had a body in the trunk. <laughs> there's no reason for this. This is, I mean, yeah, sometimes, on, depending on the age of a car, if you total the transmission, you've totaled the car, effectively. Yeah. It, it would cost more than the car is worth to fix it. Yeah. I once had Sears uh. refuse to change my transmission fluid because my car was too old. And they were like, we run the risk of blowing your transmission trying to do this to this. We're not going to do it. Lady, it just, it, it's, it's, <sighs> it's not worth it, man. <laughs> Riding the car, the motherfuck. Just. Just go to Dunkin' Donuts, for fuck's sake. Just... Right. Embrace the one-handed breakfast. Yeah. Starbucks has a really good double-smoked bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. It's a little greasy, but you can eat it in the car as long as you remember to get napkins. Dunkin' Donuts has a wide variety of options now. You have options. You have fucking options. Even Taco Bell. Okay, well, no. You know what? Pretty Maybe much every Bell. type of cereal now comes in a bar form. Yes! If you really must have your cereal, they all come in, like, bars now. Well, let's see. You can do this. That's not the only idiocy with police chases this week. This next one comes from the UK, and it's... Oh, fuck. All right, that's not what I meant. When I said tranny, everybody knows I meant transmission in a car. Don't, don't, don't try to reason with the chat. Not the other derogative thing. Don't, don't try to reason with them. They don't care. They, they, they don't want to reason. They just want to be asked. I don't want to get accused of that in the comment section. Oh, fuck the comment section. Mechanics call it a tranny. It's short for transmission and not anything else. Just for the record. Well, this guy's going to need more than a new transmission. From the UK, drunk driver hides from police in nativity scene. Suspected drink driver was not so wise to hide from police in a nativity scene. The motorist sought refuge among hay bales and the baby Jesus. After the car he was driving crashed into a metal barrier in Tadcaster, North Yorkshire. He attempted to hide from officers in a large shed which was housing a nativity. However, North Yorkshire police said they located the suspect and arrested him. So they posted a picture of the crash on Twitter. What? I'm, I'm mostly mad that the newspaper robbed me of the ability to make the he was not a wise man joke. <laughs> That's the hardest part of this one for me. <laughs> but... Many manger scenes do include a donkey. This <laughs> one doesn't seem to, so maybe he was just adding a jackass. You know, if you're drunk driving and you you've already crashed the car, y y trying to run from the cops is not going to help you. It's your car! Yeah. First of all, don't drive drunk, because that makes you an asshole. Oh, God, yes. Don't do that. You could kill somebody. But you're not. You're not getting away from this scene. Of this. I, okay, I love that. Am I shooting? And the channel says, um, uh, gold, frankincense, mirror, and paps blue ribbon. <laughs> Jesus did grow up to kind of have a hipster beard. <laughs> I just it, it you, you know what you it's uh, what was he thinking? He was like, wait, okay. If I take the little baby out, if I get in the manger, they're never gonna know Nobody's the difference. Nobody's gonna notice. I I just I just gotta be real quiet, and they'll think I'm Jesus. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Totally. It's a perfect plan. It's just ah. Uh, 
Computer Ronin. Away in a manger, the dumb drunkard lay. Uh, he stopped to ask Jesus why he didn't take the wheel. Hey! Hey, you shit. I, Ironically, I, that comment came from Wise Guy. I told you. It's because I don't know what I was doing. You do, you Jesus. You little baby motherfucker. Why didn't you drive? Why didn't you drive? Baby Jesus, like, I can't even reach the pedals. <laughs> Fuck I'm you, you Jesus. You Jesus. I know you. I know you, you Jesus. I know you. Oh, God. This was not a good plan, dude. Well, speaking of not good plans, and sadly... Fuck, this comes from my hometown. All right, I've got to give you guys a little backstory on this one. This is where I lived and grew up for 23 years, and I lived there again when I moved back. This this was Charleston, South Carolina, who this year has had a bad year. Yeah. Charleston, you know, not only did they have the police shooting of a guy who was running away, and then they tried to plant the taser on him and claim he fought back. Not only did they have that one, they also had... That fucking jackass who shot up the historic black church. So they we've had just a slight racial problem in Charleston, South Carolina this year. A little bit. Charleston is also home to the historic Citadel Academy, which is, it's sort of like West Point, only in the South. Yeah. It's a military college. And just so you know, for those of us who actually live in Charleston, we have not probably a real high regard for the Citadel. We call Citadel cadets two different things. If it's if we're being generous and we're being in polite company, we call them cadidiots. <laughs> That's good. I if like we're that. if we're not in polite company or just generally, we call them cadicks. Because that's general. These little motherfuckers are the worst. Now, they're, the College of Charleston in Charleston is also, it's it's kind of, it's fairly liberal place, decent kids that come in from all over. Not a bad place. We don't mind them. Cadidiots, they fuck up. The, this is the Coburg Cow, folks. You know about the Coburg Cow, right? I think I've told you about this. We have uh, the Coburg Dairy in Charleston has this large uh, revolving cow Oh. And part of the senior rite of passage is you have to climb the fucking Coburg sign and ride the cow. Every senior? Apparently, yeah. And that way, it was, that was so bad. So that must be happening constantly. Yeah, that was bad enough. Only the cow was about three stories off the ground. And invariably, a cadidiot fell the fuck off the cow, busted his damn head open. So now... We have this revolving cow with barbed wire around oh, no. the base of it and a big old sign on it, which essentially says, I'm paraphrasing here, do not ride the fucking cow, you fucking moron. What's wrong with you? I'm paraphrasing. So, of course. He barbed wire the cow? That's so sad. So of he was free and now he's not. So, so, of course, this year, this is all leading up to of course this happened. Citadel, U.S. College suspends cadets over KKK hoods. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I did see this. John Rosa, president of the Citadel College, said he found the images, quote, offensive and disturbing. The cadets wore hoods and all-white clothing as part of a Christmas skit. I definitely don't remember any Klansmen being part of the nativity. Yeah, it was, you know, you had the shepherd boy, the little drummer boy, the shepherds, the three wise men. I don't remember no grand wizard. Because let's say it again for the people in the back. Jesus wasn't white. No! Jesus was a Middle Eastern Jew. They not white. No. I... Clan would not have been welcome at his birthday party. 
And the reason why I gave you all that run up to it is these mother, these isolated, uptight, privileged little white motherfuckers. This is how they treat the town they come to. Now, not any sort of sensitivity to the fact that we've had major racial uh, upheaval yeah. in Charleston because of crimes perpetrated against black people. No thought to that. No, no. They're going to make a Christmas skit with Klansman hoods. What the hell was the skit? Yeah, I mean, well, the, this is not the true meaning of Christmas. No. I mean, not that there's any good time to do a fucking KKK skit, because there isn't. No, there really, there really isn't. There for really... any reason. But what does this have to do with Christmas? Unless, like, Santa and Jesus show up and tag team kick all their asses. That would be kind of a neat Christmas pageant. If, like, Santa ran the fuck over the KKK with his sleigh and Jesus smote them all. Okay, but I have a feeling that's not what they were doing. No. And even so, that would be in kind of poor taste. Mother, just fuck the fucking, fucking... I, I am ashamed that we still have that fucking Citadel in Charleston. Because... I thought I saw something where they tried to claim that they were dressed up as ghosts. Yeah. Like, no, we were supposed to be ghosts. I don't... Really? No, honey. N no. Good try. Little, I mean, not really, but whatever. You little privileged motherfucking... Just fuck all... They, they, they... Nothing... I have not heard one good story that really comes out of this at all in Charleston. And I'm pretty confident, like... The Citadel can't possibly be all white people. No, no, it's not. Because the story white people in that photo, obviously. The story specifically points ones. out in 1986, five cadets in KKK robes drag a burnt dragged a burning cross to a black cadet's room. That was in '86. Um, remember when we were in high school? Do you remember the Shannon Faulkner thing? Mm -hmm. That was a female who had to fight tooth and nail to get admitted to the to the right. Citadel. They kept trying to keep her out because she'd be girl. Like, no! Yeah. No girls. So nothing, nothing good comes out of the fucking Citadel. Even those two guys from there that were on the real world Seattle were total douchebags. Yep. It's a dickorama. <laughs> what, you like that one? Dickorama! Is, like, is that like a diorama made of all dicks? <laughs> Because now I'm picturing like a nativity set made of all dildos with the baby Jesus butt plug as the centerpiece. I, it right. seems really wrong. <laughs> I want to point out, if you are in the military and you are a Citadel graduate, you know what? The, the, it's just, it's, it's ha got a bad reputation, especially if you've actually had to live in Charleston. It's just, it's, it's not gone well. I'm I'm just saying it's it's so I, I you know what if you feel a little offended by this you should take it up with the fucking Citadel because we who live in Charleston we have to deal with this shit and it kind of it kind of leaves a bit of a fucking impression just saying I take it a little personally all right anyway moving on to just regular old plain old stupid or no you know what this isn't plain old stupid. what what is this I don't understand this we get these stories where it's like. You hear about what happened, but you know, what the fuck? There is a story there that we're not hearing. <laughs> There's more to this. Naked man, 19, carjacked Federal Express truck, could not figure out how to drive the vehicle. A naked man who carjacked a FedEx delivery truck, but then fled the vehicle when he could not figure out how to drive it, has been arrested. The scares allege that Albert Luna, 19, got into the truck around 7 p.m. Saturday as the driver was removing a package from the rear of the vehicle. Luna demanded the truck's keys, which were turned over by the driver, who, cops report, ran to a nearby residence and reported the incident. While Luna succeeded in starting the truck, the accused get, uh, carjacker's getaway was not smooth. 
He did not know how to operate the vehicle and fled the area on foot. Based on the information provided by the FedEx driver, suspect was described, Hispanic male adult, 18, 20 years. Luna, Coachella resident, was arrested Sunday and charged with carjacking. Pictured above, he is being held by the Riverside County Jail and Felony Court. I have two things to say. Mm -hmm. One, can we really be surprised this happened in Coachella? Fair enough, yeah. Two, he saw the FedEx man taking a package out of the truck, so he decided to put his package in the truck. No. Tara, no. Yes, that's no. what happened. No, Tara. No. He was like, why that truck is now devoid of package, I will give it my package. No. No. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, Jed the Jedi, step one. Cut a hole in the truck. No. No. Okay. There's a story here. We're missing part of this. Yeah. Number one, why in the hell would you do this naked? I think that's the biggest question. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean. Why, why were you naked? What's up, baby? Hi. I would think if, if you were, you know, it kind of makes you easy to pick out of a lineup is what I'm saying here. Yeah. Although I will point out, the story does not mention him as being armed, but the FedEx driver just handed him the keys. Yeah, a naked guy ran up and said, give me the keys. You can see that he's not armed. Guys have an issue with other guys' dicks. Straight guys, I'm saying. Guys have this just issue. Nobody is more obsessed with penises than straight men. And fearful. Oh, so fearful. <laughs> just, just this constant paranoid... Yeah, you know, I'm told there is elaborate urinal. Yes, etiquette. etiquette, yes. It's just this... So it's pretty much just the guy shows up with a dick. It's like, you know, he probably looked at the officer and said, he had a dick! <laughs> and I had to look at it, man. He made me look at his dick. Of course I gave him the keys. I didn't want to... He had a... Motherfucker, I mean, he had I mean, a... We do not have this problem. I mean, some naked chick walks up and demands your keys. You're going to be like, uh, I will happily give you my coat because I'm not sure you're aware that you're naked. Yo, honey, did, 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 you, did you check the mirror before you left home today? Exactly. Like, but we're not going to be afraid of your boobs. Oh, what kind of noise was that? We made a little Chewbacca noise there. Obsidian in the channel says, yeah, FedEx, this wasn't the package I ordered. <laughs> you know. And then if you're if you're going to steal an industrial vehicle and you don't know how to drive stick. Steal steal a car you know how to operate. You know, oh number one, you're already naked. So Did you're you at a helicopter fly over you? Maybe. I don't know. But you, you, you're already naked. So you're at a bit of a disadvantage, but to compound this, you're, you're attempting to escape in a vehicle you cannot operate. Yeah. Just steal a fucking Honda Civic. <laughs> I just, there's a story here and we're never going to know it. We're always going to wonder why. Yeah. Miracle looks like she heard it. Miracle hears things that no one else can hear. She doesn't hear actual sounds, but I'm pretty sure she hears like voices. Just, Albert, why, why did you, why did you naked? Why? We're never going to know why. Right, baby. Do the voices tell you to kill? <laughs> they do, but I'm too small. I'm tired. That sounds like a lot of work. I'd rather just take a nap. Our last story Holy God, it takes place in a Cracker Barrel. Oh, boy! Because, of of course, it takes place in a Cracker Barrel. And... Fried apples or what's up? Yeah, well, how do you like these apples? 
Man crawls under Cracker Barrel bathroom stall seeking sex with woman. I don't like those apples. Police say a man walked out of a bathroom after woman screamed. And of course, bonus, Florida. Boynton Beach, Florida. Police are still trying to identify a man who crawled under a bathroom stall at a Cracker Barrel in Boynton Beach and told... A 79-year-old woman that he wanted to have sex with her. Boynton Beach Police spokeswoman Stephanie Slater said the woman told police she was using the bathroom Tuesday afternoon when the man crawled under the stall and told her he wanted to have sex with her. She said he cursed at her, so she screamed for help, and the man walked out of the bathroom. Okay, Cracker Barrel, fun place. The store part is fun. The fried apples are awesome. Bathrooms, not a shining example of cleanliness in my experience. So one, not somewhere I'd want to crawl around on the floor. Two, certainly not somewhere I'd want to have sex. And even if you could do surgery in the bathrooms and they were gorgeous and had flower arrangements... Fuck you, I'm trying to pee. And somebody's grandma? Yeah. 79 years old. And do you, have you never been through the process of wooing, sir? <laughs> d d does the concept elude you? Evidently. I'm, I'm going to say that senior citizens, typically, I, I can't know for sure, but I'm going to say typically senior citizens not down for hitting it in a Cracker Barrel bathroom. I wouldn't say in general, no. You know, may, maybe some of them do it a little freaky and that's okay, you know. Sure. I, how you live your life, it's, it's, it's how you live your life, but... I is why is that's 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 not it doesn't exactly strike me as setting the mood shall we say because you're no you're taking a leak you look down ha ha I knew well fuck but let's be honest this fucked up asshole not worried about mood no Hey, hey, I, I, I like them orthopedic shoes y'all got on. I like them. Why are you screaming? What's going on? I don't even have anything funny to say because this is just creepy and gross. And I really I hope they catch him. Yes. And lock him up for a very long time. And he is denied the pleasure of Cracker Barrel food and instead has to eat disgusting prison food and think about what he's done. Don't just don't fucking do what is. Uh, yes. The first thing we learned tonight is there is an etiquette to things. I think this is stronger than an etiquette issue. <laughs> I think that's a mild understatement. Maybe I'm not. Saying that it's rude to hit up strangers for sex in the Crackle Barrel bathroom. I mean, I guess it is, but it's also a felony. Just touch. You know, normally when they scream, they're probably not into you like that. Yeah. It's, it's just, just leave, oh God. Does no one teach people this shit anymore? Do they just have to fucking flail? Uh, we've learned that sometimes you're never going to get the whole story. And that is a sad and tragic thing. I, we're, I'm always in the back of my head for the rest of my life somewhere. There's going to be one, a couple little neurons 
spinning around each other going, why the fuck was this guy naked? Why? Why would he steal the truck if he's naked and he didn't know how to drive it? Why? That's We've also learned that apparently a dick is a weapon. Yeah. You can carjack with your dick. You can carjack with your dick. So that's a thing. We've learned that, you know, racial sensitivity may be a thing that you need to pick up. Yeah. Especially if you're representing a U.S. military college. Racial sensitivity, not being an asshole. Uh, and, and what's pissing me off particularly about this, they're just suspended. They really? Weren't, yeah, they weren't kicked out. They're just on suspension. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's good job. We've learned that um, baby Jesus is not big on drunk driving and not going to save your ass. <laughs> baby Jesus says don't drink and drive. <laughs> and also, don't eat cereal and drive. No. Is one-handed foods behind the wheel. And finally, we learned tonight, just when you thought people couldn't get any more stupid, someone will, 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 will perk their head up and go, challenge accepted. Yeah. Wait, wait, I got one. 